What's up everyone? Welcome to Discover the World. Forget the Eiffel Tower. Forget the gondolas of Venice. We are going somewhere else entirely. A place where love, marriage and family are woven into the very fabric of society, but not always in ways you might expect. Join us on a fascinating journey to Iran. We are diving deep into the heart of this ancient land, exploring the unique cultural practices surrounding marriage and relationships. We are talking about traditions that stretch back centuries, beliefs that shape lives and choices that might surprise you. You see in Iran, marriage isn't just about two people finding each other, it's about family, community and a whole lot more. It's about finding a place within a complex cultural tapestry, a tapestry woven with threads of tradition, faith and yes, even a healthy dose of pragmatism. So, buckle up, because we are about to explore a side of Iran you won't find in your average travel brochure. This is about the real deal, the human stories behind the headlines. We are talking about love, loss and the enduring power of human connection. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more travel content and cultural explorations. Now, let's talk about something you don't hear every day, temporary marriage. Yeah, you heard that right. In Iran it's called Sikhe and it's a practice rooted in Shia Islam allowing a man and a woman to enter into a marital contract for a predetermined period. Think of it as a way to address specific needs within the boundaries of their faith. It might sound strange to some, maybe even controversial, but it's important to remember, we're not here to judge, we're here to understand. Sigge has its own set of rules and regulations often used in situations where a more permanent union isn't feasible. It can provide legal and social cover for couples who might not be ready for a lifelong commitment or it can offer a solution for the those seeking companionship for a, a defined period. Love, marriage, relationships, they're messy and complicated everywhere, right? Uh, Sige is just one more example of how different cultures navigate these universal human experiences. Family. It's the cornerstone of Iranian society, the bedrock upon which everything else is built. And within this intricate web of familial relationships lies a concept known as Mahram. In essence, Mahram defines the boundaries of permissible interaction between men and women within the family structure. These are the relationships where physical touch and close contact are considered acceptable, relationships like siblings, parents and children and so on. Now, to outsiders, the concept of Mahram might seem overly restrictive, but like so much in Iranian culture, it's rooted in a deep sense of respect modesty and the preservation of family honor. These boundaries, while seemingly rigid, actually serve to strengthen the family unit, fostering an environment of trust and security. It's about understanding where you fit in, knowing your role within the larger family structure, and believe me, in a culture as rich and complex as Iran's, family is everything. Arranged marriages. Outdated, archaic, a relic of the past. But here in Iran, it's a tradition that's very much alive. It's about trust, family elders finding a good match. Not always perfect, but there's beauty in it. Things are changing even here. Young people want love, or at least the illusion of it. A fascinating dance between tradition and modernity, caught between two worlds, reconciling family expectations with their own hearts. In a changing world, the desire for love and companionship binds us together. All right, so let's talk about Reza and Soraya. A love story for the ages? Maybe, maybe not. But it's theirs, and that's all that matters. Reza, he's a carpenter, hands roughened by years of working with wood, a quiet strength about him. Soraya, she's all smiles and warmth, a woman who radiates this quiet confidence that just draws you in. Their story? It's not some whirlwind romance, no chance encounter in a Parisian cafe. No, this is Iran, remember? See, Reza's first wife, she passed away a few years back leaving him with two young kids. Heartbroken, lost, he thought he'd never love again. But his family, they knew he needed someone, someone to share the load, someone to bring light back into his life. Enter Soraya. She'd been married before too, a short, unhappy chapter she'd rather forget. When the family suggested this union, well, let's just say neither of them was jumping for joy, but something shifted. Maybe it was the shared grief, the understanding of what it means to lose a part of yourself. Maybe it was the quiet moments, the way they just seemed to fit together. Two pieces of a broken puzzle slotting into place. Whatever it was, love or something damn close to it blossomed. It wasn't easy. Blending families, navigating societal expectations. It all takes work. 
But look at them now, years later, the warmth in their eyes, the easy laughter, the way their hands instinctively reach for each other. It's a reminder that love can bloom in the most unexpected places, that sometimes the best stories are the ones that simmer slowly, building in intensity until they finally boil over with a quiet, enduring passion. Forget what you think you know about individualism, about doing your own thing. Here in Iran, it's different. Family, community, they're not just abstract concepts, they're the very fabric of society. And when it comes to something as important as marriage, well, let's just say it's a group activity. This isn't Vegas, folks. No quickie weddings fueled by tequila shots and bad decisions. From the moment you're born, you're part of this intricate web of relationships. And those relationships, they come with expectations. Marriage, it's not just about two people finding each other. It's about two families merging, two histories intertwining. So yeah, aunts, uncles, cousins, even the nosy neighbor down the street, they all get a say. And trust me, they're not shy about sharing their opinions. Now, you might think this sounds suffocating, this constant scrutiny, this lack of autonomy, but there's a certain comfort in it too, a sense of belonging, of being supported by something larger than yourself. When everyone's invested in your happiness, well, it creates a different kind of pressure, but also a different kind of strength. It's this unspoken understanding that you're not alone, that you have an entire network of people ready to catch you if you fall. And in a world that can feel increasingly isolating, that's a powerful thing. It's a reminder that we're social creatures, hardwired for connection, for community. And while the individualistic West might scoff at this level of involvement, there's a wisdom here, a recognition that sometimes the greatest joys in life, like the challenges, are best faced together. We've talked about the customs, the traditions, the weight of family and faith in shaping the idea of marriage in Iran. But let's not kid ourselves, folks. Marriage everywhere boils down to a contract, a legally binding agreement with the power to make or break you. In Iran, yeah, that contract is steeped in centuries of Islamic law, where the rights and responsibilities of both parties are clearly defined, for better or worse. Now, I'm no lawyer, and the last place you'd find me is arguing a prenup. But the intricacies of Iranian marriage law are fascinating, particularly when it comes to a wife's role in choosing a new bride for her husband. It's a situation ripe for conflict, for power dynamics to shift like sand in the desert. But it's also a testament to the pragmatic nature of a culture that recognizes the complexities of life and death and the needs that linger long after we're gone. The legal system here, like any, attempts to co codify fairness to ensure a certain level of protection for everyone involved. But let's be honest, no amount of legal jargon can truly account for the messy, unpredictable emotions that come with love, loss, and the prospect of sharing your life, your bed, with someone new. It's a high-stakes game, this dance between tradition and modernity, between the letter of the law and the yearnings of the heart. And believe me, in a place like Iran, where the personal and the political political are forever intertwined. The consequences of these choices resonate far beyond the courtroom walls. It's a delicate balance, a tightrope walk between duty and desire and the outcome. Well, that's a story for the ages. Let's talk about weddings. Not your typical white dress, drunken uncle, chicken or fish affair. No, we're talking about celebrations steeped in centuries of tradition, where symbolism and ritual hold as much weight as the vows themselves. In Iran, a wedding is a feast for the senses, a riot of color, music, and the intoxicating aroma of saffron and rose water. Now, imagine a wedding where the bride isn't some blushing ingenue, but a woman chosen, perhaps even proposed by, the existing wife. There's a weight to that, a sense of history and expectation that hangs heavy in the air, even amidst the joyous ululations and the hypnotic thrum of the daff. It's a celebration, yes, but one tinged with a certain gravitas, a recognition of the unusual circumstances that brought everyone together. The Sofre Agd, that's the heart of it all. A spread of symbolic items, each with its own meaning, its own wish for the couple's future. Mirrors reflecting light and happiness. Eggs representing fertility and, of course, sugar cones ground together to symbolize a life sweetened by love and companionship. But beneath the surface, you can't help but wonder, are these symbols of hope or harbingers of a more complex reality? 
Is there a sense of relief of duty fulfilled in the eyes of the woman who orchestrated this union, or does a flicker of something else, something unspoken, dance in the shadows? Jealousy, resignation, acceptance? These are the questions that linger, long after the last strains of music have faded and the guests have departed, leaving behind only whispers and the faint scent of rose water in the air. You know, you travel the world long enough, you meet all sorts, academics, anthropologists, the guys who claim they can tell your fortune from the way you eat your noodles. Everyone's got a theory on the mysteries of the human heart. Experts on Iranian culture say choosing a new bride is rooted in pragmatism. It's about ensuring the family line and providing for everyone's needs. Societal pressures and tradition play a big role. But human beings, we're messy. We don't fit neatly into categories. Every story is unique, every motivation layered and complex. The beauty lies in our endless capacity to surprise and rewrite the script. You know, every culture has its own set of rules, its own understanding of what's right, what's expected. Here in the Islamic Republic, those expectations run deep. Centuries of tradition of faith weigh heavy on the shoulders of these families. Marriage, it's not just about love, not just about uh, finding the one, it's about family legacy, about honor, about fulfilling a role that's been laid out for generations. Imagine the pressure cooker that creates. But here's the thing about pressure cookers. Sometimes they explode. You see these young people grappling with ancient customs in a world that's changing faster than ever. They're caught between what's expected and what they want, what they were raised to believe, and what they feel in their hearts. That kind of tension, that struggle, it's universal. We've all felt it, haven't we? The need to honor the past, while forging your own path. It's what makes us human. It's what makes stories like these so damn compelling. Tehran, Shiraz, Isfahan. These cities are a study in contrast. Ancient mosques cast long shadows over bustling marketplaces. Satellite dishes sprout from balconies overlooking centuries-old courtyards. It's a collision of old and new, a delicate dance between tradition and tension and tradition and change. And that tension, it plays out in the lives of these couples. They're on Instagram for Christ's sakes. They're watching the same globalized pop culture we are. They feel the pull of the wider world, the allure of different ways of life. But the old ways, they die hard. Family ties are strong here. Tradition is a powerful force. You can see it in the way they negotiate their relationships, the compromises they make. The way they try to find a balance between honoring their heritage and embracing the possibilities of the modern world. It's a high wire act, this balancing act between who they are and who they are expected to be. And let me tell you, it makes for one hell of a story. So, we've walked the streets of Tehran, stepped inside homes and listened to stories of love, family and the complexities of culture. We've seen how a society grapples with change, how ancient traditions endure in the face of a rapidly evolving world. It's messy, it's complicated, and it's beautiful. It's a side of Iran, of humanity, that you don't often see. And if you're anything like me, it leaves you wanting more. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more travel content and cultural explorations. I was waiting till the sky was falling And my breath till every single star had a light On my mind, I never saw it coming Didn't think you'd wake me with a kiss